Am I supposed to like sit down right here or something? Like chill out like this? I'd rather stand. The rapper says, me, me, ma, me, ma. The MC says, us, our, we. Rapealo. The rapper is a product of corporate marketing, which is not bad. Don't think that what I'm saying is to belittle that. It's not. It's, this is the condition of the rapper. The rapper is corporate marketing. The MC is community respect. Where do you get your power? You can get your power from being every day on Much Music, every day on MTV, every day on these magazine covers, and you get a degree of power. Your popularity and celebrity makes the audience trust in your message. Thus, we can sell you something. The MC says, I have principles I have to stand on. And I will feel stupid going against, I can't even walk down the street if I say look or dress like that because there's a community I have to deal with. I'm speaking on behalf of them. They brought me up here to talk to you. The corporate, the cultural. For many years, this was a fight. Are you in this for the money or are you in this for the love? Are you in this just to get what you could get and get out? Or is this your lifestyle? Neither side is wrong. Both determine just who you are. If you're a rapper and you say, listen, I'm not really in all this hip hop and breaking and everything. Listen, I'm just trying to get a little money and I can rap and I'm going to rap and get this money and I'm going to do a movie deal and something else. I'm not really interested in this. I'm just going to use the rap to get me where I'm going. There ain't nothing wrong with that. The repercussions, though, is that you won't last long as a rapper. You may put out one or two albums, and then that'll be that. Culturally, you are constantly listening to the people, constantly listening to their gripes, to their pains, to their joys, and you turn that into lyrics. And you tell the people what they can't say on the mic because they don't have the mic. The MC tells you what is already on your mind. The rapper tells you what's on his or her mind. Sometimes we have to be rappers. I'm the greatest MC that ever touched the mic. Turn it up, get the cameras bright. That's me, 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 me. That's rap. One of the greatest rappers of all time, Muhammad Ali. If you ever want to see the root of rap, listen to Muhammad Ali. And he gets respect. So don't think that rap is this slowly thing that all oh, these rappers, are, they messing up the culture. Not really. We'll get into that in a minute. It's a choice. I'm in this for the money. And that's it. Now, the culture says, no, we got some principles to uphold. I, I don't know about just money. I, you know, let me see what's up with this peace, love, unity. Uh, can we get more knowledge? What about these kids? Uh, now, that's your choice. Somebody over here will be like, you crazy. I'm going to get this money. You over here would go ahead and get your money, but I will never live in guilt. I will achieve peace. I have real love in my life. If peace and love and joy is not important to you, then keep it real. The problem is, we say we want peace, but we really want that money. Others claim they want money, but really, they just want peace. Cultural corporate. For many years, this was the fight. The business model of the past always disregarded principles, always disregarded credibility and authenticity for the phony the fantastic, the unreal, the over the top. Reality has become a major issue on everybody's mind. Reality. I wanna get closer and closer and closer to the real. This is a phenomenon. You guys are creating this. We don't want the fantasy. Tell me what's real. Now you got reality TV. Now the news channels are all trying to give you the most blood and right up to the minute action. And the board members, the bankers, are saying, we don't need the facade no more. There's more money in reality. A lot of revolutionaries fight, 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 get so hard in the fight that they kill the enemy and just keep stabbing the air. So, ah! 
You kill the enemy. You've reached your goal, but you're still, ah! The new paradigm is, if you stood on your principles, all these corporations want to deal with you. The culture has won over the corporations. I'm called by everyone all day. Yo, Chris, do an interview. Yo, Chris, come over here. Yo, and I'm like, nope, 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 no. Because I'm standing on this principle over here called the Hip Hop Declaration of Peace. I don't know what that is over there, and I'm not moving from my position. So I stand on this position right here, and what happens? The corporate structure changes around me. Now, the corporate structure says, I want authenticity. Because that is trust. And that makes our stock market, that makes our market share go up when people believe in us. I say, yo, BET, your programming is whack. Then I go to BET. And the staff says, you know, Chris, you're right. I don't know what to do with this place. Our programming is whack. Can you help us? What, this, I'm not, and I'm not saying this. This is real talk. I was at MTV last week before I came here. We did a special for Yo! MTV Raps. I was there at MTV right there, and they know how I feel about MTV, but I did it because we started Yo! MTV Raps with the late Ted Demi. It was sentimental. I said, okay, no problem. Fab Five Freddy, my philosophy for his video is all that. So I said, let me just do it. But as I walk in MTV, you know, MTV Cribs, and this one, no, 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 no. I'm staying with what I came here to do. You can't lure me into, yo, Chris, just do another show right here. Oh, yo, it's right here. Nah. I came here for your MTV raps, and I'm here for your MTV raps. And by the way, now that I'm here, let me tell you something about your programming. <laughs> and I get the wailing on these producers, and they all say, you know what? You're absolutely correct. We're all trapped. We're all trapped. Everybody here working for a check, and we all taking orders. What you want? The new paradigm is about understanding culture. Understanding why these people are so real. Because if we can align our company with real, we can sell our product. So we'll do anything this artist says. Lo and behold, I was approached by Smirnoff. Do you want to do Listen to My Nine? What you know about Listen to My She starts singing it. Why da da dang? Why da 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 dang? This is, the, this is the head of advertising for Smirnoff. This is the head. I'm like, why are you so stuck on all my gangster stuff and the old street stuff? Why are you so stuck on that? Well, that's authentic and real. Miss, I've done other albums. Ah, we have your whole catalog. We totally understand what it is. But this record, Criminal Minded, we'd like to then do that record if you're uninterested in listening to my 9mm. Now, I'm on the phone with the head of advertising for Smirnoff discussing my first album in a cultural sense. Then... I say, well, who you think should produce this? She said, isn't Premier? Uh, Premier's available. He can do it. I'm like, wait a minute. What was that? You up on gangster? Yeah, I got all gangster stuff. Start spitting just to get a rap. I mean, this is like on the phone. If you getting caught up in the prejudice, you're going to lose. What matters today is credibility and authenticity. Because trust is what runs the so-called economy. And things are so bad right now that banks and corporations all over are looking for what's real. So if you've been real and you've been on the front lines for change and you've been that voice for the voiceless, don't give up. You may be at your last leg right now, listening to me right now. You may have came here deciding, I can't do this no more. I'm not getting no support. I'm not getting no help. It seems like I'm beating my head against the wall. Nobody understands what I'm doing. I'm going to quit. I'm going to pursue what I know I need to do. Let me go get a job. Let me support my kids. Let me. No, this, this talk that I'm giving you here today says this. Your time has come. Your time has come. Others won't get it for five more years, but I'm telling you what I'm experiencing right now, and I don't change my principles for no one. The companies that grew up with KRS in 87, 88, 89, they are the new executives, CEOs, VPs, and they don't like what's going on either. And their company needs credibility, so all of it works for the guy or for the woman who stay true to their principles. 
See, this is the new judgment day right here. Everybody chasing the money now not going to get it. Those who said it ain't about the money is going to get it. The companies want to hear you say, for me, it ain't about your money. Keep your money. We out here on the corner like this. They will throw that money at you. Please begging you to take their money. I'm not telling you something I've read. I'm telling you something that I'm living right this very moment. 